ಓಂ ಅಜ್ಞಾನತಿಮಿರಂದಸ್ಯಾಜ್ಞಾನಂಜನಶಲಾಘಯ ಚಕ್ಷುರ್ಮಿಲಿತಂ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀಗುರುವೇ ನಮಃ ನಮೋ ವಿಷ್ಣುಪಾ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪೃಷ್ಠಾ ಭೂತಲೆ ಶ್ರೀಮತೆ ಭಕ್ತಿವೇದಾಂತಸ್ವಾಮಿ ನಾಮಿನೆ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಸರಸ್ವತೆ ದೇವೆ ಗೌರವಾಣಿ ಪ್ರಚಾರಿಣಿ ನಿರ್ವಿಶೇಷ ಶೂನ್ಯವಾದಿ ಪಾಶ್ಚಾತ್ಯ ದೇಶ ತಾರಿಣಿ ಜಯ ಶ್ರೀಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಪ್ರಭು ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಶ್ರೀ ಅದ್ವೈತ ಗದಾಧರ ಶ್ರೀ ವಾಸದಿ ಗೌರಭಕ್ತ ವೃಂದ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೇ ಹರೇ ಸೊ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಸೀಯಿಂಗ್ ಫರ್ದರ್ ದಟ್ ಹೌ ದಿತಿ ಈವನ್ ದೋ ವೆನ್ ಶಿ ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟುಡ್ ದಟ್ ದ ಸನ್ಸ್ ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ ಬಾರ್ನ್ ಎಸ್ ಡಿಮೋನಿಯಾಕ್ ಎಸ್ ಅಸುರಾಸ್ ಬಟ್ ಸ್ಟಿಲ್ ಶಿ ವಾಂಟೆಡ್ ಟು ಪ್ರೊಟೆಕ್ಟ್ ಹರ್ ಪ್ರೊಜೆನಿ ಶಿ ವಾಂಟೆಡ್ ಟು ಪ್ರೊಟೆಕ್ಟ್ ಹರ್ ಚಿಲ್ಡ್ರನ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ವೆನ್ ಕಶ್ಯಪ ಇನ್ಫಾರ್ಮ್ ದಟ್ ಈವನ್ ದೋ ದೇ ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ ಪ್ರೊಟೆಕ್ಟೆಡ್ ನಾವು ಬಟ್ ಲೇಟರ್ ಆನ್ ದ ಸುಪ್ರೀಮ್ ಲಾರ್ಡ್ ವಿಲ್ ಹಿಮ್ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ಡಿಸೆಂಡ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ವುಡ್ ಪರ್ಸನಲಿ ಕಿಲ್ ದ ಸನ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿತಿ ಸೊ ದಿತಿ ವಾಸ್ ರಿಲೀವ್ಡ್ ಆಫ್ ದಟ್ ಎಂಗ್ಸೈಟಿ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಶಿ ಕನ್ಸಿಡರ್ಡ್ ದಟ್ ಲೆಟ್ ಮೈ ಚಿಲ್ಡ್ರನ್ ನಾಟ್ ಬಿ ಕಿಲ್ಡ್ ಬೈ ದ ಕರ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಬ್ರಾಹ್ಮಣಾಸ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಇಫ್ ದೇ ಆರ್ ನೆಗ್ಲೆಕ್ಟೆಡ್ ಬೈ ಗ್ರೇಟ್ ಪರ್ಸನಾಲಿಟೀಸ್ ದೆನ್ ದೇ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ನೋ ಮೋರ್ ಶೆಲ್ಟರ್ ವೇರ್ ಆಸ್ ವೆನ್ ದೇ ಆರ್ ಕಿಲ್ಡ್ ಡೈರೆಕ್ಟ್ಲಿ ಬೈ ದ ಸುಪ್ರೀಮ್ ಪರ್ಸನಾಲಿಟಿ ಆಫ್ ಗಾಡ್ ಹೆಡ್ ದೆನ್ ದೇ ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ ಲಿಬರೇಟೆಡ್ ಫ್ರಾಮ್ ದಿಸ್ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ ಸೊ ಸೀಯಿಂಗ್ ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡಿಂಗ್ ದಿಸ್ ಶಿ ವಾಸ್ ಗ್ಲಾಡ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ನೌ ಶೀ ಈಸ್ ನೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ವರ್ಸ್ ಎಸ್ ಶೀ ಈಸ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪ್ಲೇನಿಂಗ್ ದಟ್ ಒನ್ ಹೂ ಈಸ್ ಅಬ್ಯಾಂಡನ್ಡ್ ಆರ್ ಕರ್ಸ್ಡ್ ಆರ್ ಕಂಡೆಮ್ಡ್ ಬೈ ಅ ಬ್ರಾಹ್ಮಣ ಆರ್ ಬೈ ಗ್ರೇಟ್ ಪರ್ಸನಾಲಿಟಿ ಸಚ್ ಪರ್ಸನ್ ವಿಲ್ ಆಲ್ವೇಸ್ ರಿಮೇನ್ ಫಿಯರ್ಫುಲ್ ಟು ಆಲ್ ದ ಲಿವಿಂಗ್ ಆಂಟಿಟೀಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಈವನ್ he will be condemned by those residing in hellish planets and those who are in the same species of life even such person will condemn so that means suppose hiranyakashipu and hiranyaksha they are demoniac people they are asuras so such asuras will be condemned even by hellish planet residents if they are condemned by the great sages if they are condemned by brahmanas so that means actually they are all asuras they are practically living in hellish life but even the people living in hellish life will condemn them not only that the people who are asuric who are of the same species will also condemn generally asuras are friend with each other friendly with each other but even asuras will condemn such persons who are neglected by or who are cursed by great personalities so in the purport prabhupad gives the example that uh, one of the practical examples of condemned species of life is dog isn't it dogs not only they will bite others they don't leave their contemporaries also <laughs> very well known for you know fighting with other dogs you can see that so prabhupada is saying practical example of condemned species of life is the dog dogs are so condemned that they never never show any sympathy to their contemporaries so they have no sympathy even for their contemporaries so just few days back i was seeing that uh, you know one small puppy dog was killed on the road and then other some few dogs are coming and they're eating that away so practically you can see they are so condemned <laughs> isn't it they don't spare even their contemporaries then kashyap is also informing 
that uh, not only your demoniac sons they will be killed by the supreme personality of godhead because of your okay this is one fault you have done but because of your saintly nature and because of certain good qualities which you have you will be blessed that in your coming generation the son of one of your demoniac sons that means your grandson he will be a great devotee of the lord so what are your good qualities because of your lamentation you committed some mistake but you lamented for that mistake so that is a great quality and then tapa that means penitence you have taken great severe penitence proper deliberation you have also deliberated on your mistakes on your faults and the proper course of action not only that the most important your unflinching faith in the supreme personality of godhead and your adoration for great personalities like lord shiva and your husband so because of all these qualities you will have a grandson prahlad who will broadcast the glories of the supreme personality of godhead and then further kashyap also informs that he will be such a great personality that all devotees would follow in the footsteps of prahlad he will be called mahajana mahajana ye nagatah sapantah mahajanas are the personalities on whose footsteps all the personalities great personalities follow in their footsteps so this is the verse <coughs> which we are reading now yogair hem hemeva durvarnam bhavishyanti sadavah nirv nirvere dibhir atmanam yashilam anuvartitam so sadavah great personalities yashilam anuvartitam they will follow in the footsteps of prahlad maharaj shilam means character so they will follow the character they will emulate the character of prahlad maharaj anuvartitam means they will follow in the footsteps of his great character how would they follow yogair hemeva durvarnam just like hema gold can be purified by certain process of the base qualities so gold can have certain impurities in it but by certain process of heating and you know burning it in fire impurities can be removed and gold can be purified similarly the devotees of the lord even though they may have base qualities in them the living entities in general who have got all base qualities in them such living entities can become purified by following the process of bhakti yoga as given by prahlad maharaj following in the footsteps of prahlad maharaj yogair by devotional service to the lord so they will be able to purify themselves of base qualities so prabhu pad in the purport explains the importance of following this yoga process or devotional process so this is very important prabhu pad explains yoga practice the process of purifying one's existential identity why because yoga we are now viyoga viyoga means we are cut off from the supreme lord that is called viyoga yoga means once again remove those impurities by which we have separated from the lord and once again become connected to the lord 
in our original identity as servants of the Lord. That is actually called as yoga. So the essential part of yoga is to purify of contamination because of which we have become yoga, because of which we have become separated from the Lord. And Bhagavad Gita explains the beginning of yoga is Icha and Vesha. Beginning of our separation from the Supreme Lord is independent desire, Icha, to enjoy separate from the Lord. And not only that, Vesha, to envy the position of the Supreme Lord as the Supreme Enjoyer and to occupy His position to become Ishwara ourselves. That is called Dvesha. So because of these two primary contamination, the living entities become separated from the Lord and come to this material world to enjoy independent of the Supreme Lord and being envious of the position of the Supreme Lord. So when we become freed from these contaminations, that is called as yoga. Then Prabhupada explains what is the most essential quality of yoga. Where does yoga begin? If this quality is not there, yoga doesn't begin. The basic principle of yoga is self-control. You see, which is opposed to sense gratification. By sense gratification, we will become more and more contaminated, more and more diseased. Because sometimes somebody may question, Are senses are given, senses are given to enjoy. Isn't it? Sometimes people ask this, eyes are given for what? Nose is given, tongue is given, all these senses are given. So automatically we think sense and sense object. Senses are given to enjoy sense object. No, this is what one should understand. In diseased condition, if you enjoy with the senses, you will become more diseased. Not only you will become more diseased, you will suffer more. You can imagine if you are suffering and if you try to enjoy, it will be more suffering to you. You are creating more suffering for yourself. Even though you are getting some temporary enjoyment in eating. Correct. So this is what one should understand. Basic principle of yoga begins with self-control. We have to control our mind. We have to control our senses. Then what will happen? Gradually, we will become purified of these base qualities. Then we will be able to regain our original nature as servant of the Supreme Lord. Freed from enviousness. Freed from animosity which is very essential because otherwise in material world our enviousness to the Lord is shown by enviousness to the living entities you see here we can see Prabhupada is explaining very beautifully this we will focus in today's class in the conditional state, every living being is envious of another living being. But in the liberated state, there is absence of animosity. And then Prabhupada is giving the example of Prahlad Maharaj. <clears throat> there itself we can see how much envious one can be. One can become envious of his own son. Just imagine, his own son. One can become envious of his own son. Hirina Kashipu became envious of his own son. And how much non-envious one could be in liberated state, that one, Prahlad Maharaj, who is on a liberated state, great devotee of the Lord, his own father is torturing him like anything. Prabhupada is saying two very important things. He never cursed any of the person who tortured him. 
बिकॉज हिज फादर इंगेज सो मेनी अदर पीपल टू टॉर्चर हिम बट ही नेवर कर्स एनी ऑफ दैन नॉट ओनली दैट इवन आफ्टर बींग टॉर्चर्ड सो मच वेन द टाइम केम फॉर बेनिडिक्शन फ्रॉम द लॉर्ड सच ए ग्रेट डिवोटी ही इज ही नेवर आस्ट एनी बेनिडिक्शन फॉर हिमसेल्फ never asked any benediction for himself such a great devotee he is not only he never asked any benediction for himself he asked benediction for the one who was so much envious towards him his father so much envious his welfare he wants imagine okay we can want welfare of people who are who may not be friendly to us but at least who are innocent somebody who is envious of us we will condemn him life after life we should be condemned we can never think of his welfare at least isn't it even as a devotee sometimes correct but just imagine the greatness of prahlad as a devotee as a neophyte devotees we may be you know thinking of welfare of people we are preaching krishna consciousness to them but if somebody becomes envious to us probably we would also like to condemn him life after life that you should not be liberated any time but here we can see the greatness of prahlad maharaj not only for living entities other living entities also we will see when he is praying to the lord he is praying for the welfare of all living entities he is praying for the welfare of his father and he is also praying to the lord my dear lord let all these living envious living entities become cool down let them all get peace and let them gradually become free from contamination of this enviousness and let them become liberated in your devotional service so prabhu passes this is prahlad maharaj so this point is very important conditional life even up to the heavenly planets from ant down from ant up to the topmost up to brahma or indra the king of heaven everyone is filled with enviousness the moment one becomes liberated from material contamination one is situated on spiritual platform one is free from envy so simple test how to test somebody spiritually advanced he must be free from enviousness even enviousness towards his enemies one must be free from that then he is at paramahamsa stage not envious of anyone prabhu pad gives an a wonderful example of how enviousness extends up to even indra most one of the most pious living entities to become king of heaven is not ordinary one has to be very very pious in fact <clears throat> indra he is called as shatakrutu he is considered to be so pious he has a record in his name just like we have guinness book of world record there so many records we create similarly indra has a record nobody has crossed his record you see he is called shatakrutu he has performed 100 ashwamedha yagna this like people make century isn't it they create records of centuries isn't it so indra has created century in ashwamedha yagna so he is called shatakrutu so once it so happened that maharaj prithu he is duty bound because according to the vedic literature one should perform yagnas in order to have peace and prosperity yagna actually means it is satisfaction of the supreme lord annad bhavanti bhutani we all know that every living entity is all they are all dependent on anna and anna is dependent on rains 
and rain is dependent on yagna so it was duty of maharaj prithu to perform many many yagnas so he decided i will also perform 100 yagnas not for myself he was not planning to create a record difference between him and indra is indra wanted for his self satisfaction to have that record in his name and to be the most pious in that direction so maharaj prithu was not planning to create some record he wanted for the welfare of his kingdom he wanted to perform as many yagnas so he thought i will perform 100 yagnas so 99 he performed and when indra came to know that 100 yagna is going to perform now he is going to break my record so then he planned many mischievous things you see so what did he do in the beginning first he became invisible and then he stole the horse that horse that you know the horse which was supposed to be sacrificed in that ashwamedha yagna he stole away that horse and then invisibly he started running with that horse and then so that he will not be detected even by great sages because he can be invisible to ordinary people but great personalities they will be able to see him so then what did he do he in order to befool the saintly people he dressed himself as a mendicant as a sanyasi going with the horse so that nobody will think that he is stealing away the horse so like that he was stealing away the horse in the in the dress of a sanyasi and uh, so nobody was able to understand what is happening but atri rishi he was able to make out he was able to see that actually he is indra dressed as a pretender pashandi or pakhandi in bhagavatam the word is used pakhandi prabhupada says pakhandi and pashandi are same you see why they are called pashandi they are called as imposters imposters means something is within their heart but they are posing as something else so prabhupada explains and bhagavatam explains this cheating business of sanyasi was started by indra later on it became a parampara of indra <laughs> so indra also started a parampara of cheating sanyasis isn't it so he stole away and then atri rishi he went back and he informed this to the son of prithu maharaj so son of prithu maharaj was very valiant kshatriya immediately he went out in search of indra this mendicant and he searched out and he saw and then he was confused he said this is not indra this is a great sanyasi i cannot kill him but then atri rishi told him that don't go by his false dress he is only externally dressed as a sanyasi but otherwise he is indra i am telling you should take away that horse so somehow then you know with his great force the son of prithu maharaj took away that horse back and immediately seeing the prowess of son of prithu maharaj he abandoned his false dress and then ran away for his life and gave up that horse so then he brought his brought the horse back and once again the sacrifice was started but indra would not give up so again with his mystic power he created denseness you know darkness in that arena of sacrifice and then when everybody was not, they were not able to see anything once again he stole away that horse once again he took away that horse and again he dressed in another form of sanyasi naked sanyasi this time first as a dress of a sanyasi then naked sanyasi like that he did many times so actually prabhupada explains that this is the beginning of varieties of these cheating sanyasis all these cheating sanyasi the beginning was from indra so like this he did many many times and every time you know the sun would bring back the horse defeating indra and again and again he would give up his false dress and again run for his life <laughs> so this had become like this then finally prithu maharaj decided now i am not going to leave him many times he has disturbed the sacrifice he took up his bow and arrow and he planned to kill indra 
So when he was about to kill Indra at that time, Brahma appeared from the sacrifice and he forbade Prithu Maharaj. Actually, in fact, before even Prithu Maharaj wanted to kill the priests who were performing the yagna, they said, you don't have to do this because you are already performing the yagna. It will not be auspicious for you to kill, you know, Indra. It will not be good. What we can do, they said is, we will also sacrifice him along with the horse. <laughs> you see, with the power of mantra, we will sacrifice him. And the moment they were planning to do this, Brahma appeared. Because factually, Indra is a devotee. And one devotee will be sacrificed in that arena. So they did not want that inauspiciousness to be done. So Brahma appeared and forbade all these priests that don't do all these things. And then he preached to Prithu Maharaj also. That you are a great devotee of the Lord. Doesn't matter, you have enough punya with you. Just by your devotional service you have enough. And you have already performed 99. Let your yagna be stopped at 99. Don't do the 100. Let that be reserved for Indra. Doesn't matter. Isn't it? So, then he agreed. So, you can just imagine. Prabhupada explains there. Just by the preaching of Brahma, Prithu Maharaj agreed. Whereas, Prithu Maharaj is such a great devotee. Actually, he could have done like this. Indra could have done like this. But he is a materialistic devotee. He is not a great devotee of the Lord. So, he still wanted to keep the record. So many times he was defeated. In spite of that, he did not think, Okay, what is there? Let him equal my record. No. Could not even think that much. This is a materialistic person. So, Brahma then pacified him. Pacified uh, Prithu Maharaj. And Prithu Maharaj agreed that, Okay, I will just finish that. This yagna at 99, I will not perform this 100th yagna. And then being satisfied with Prithu Maharaj by the sacrifice of that 100th yagna, Lord Vishnu became very pleased. Personally, the Lord appeared and pacified Prithu Maharaj. He said that, I am very happy at this. And along with the Lord, uh, even Indra appeared and Indra realized his mistake, fell down at the feet of Prithu Maharaj. So Prithu Maharaj did not neglect him. Immediately, he did not even allow him to bow down and pay obeisances. He just went and embraced him. And both of them forgot their enviousness, animosity, everything. Prabhupada explains some very wonderful, important principles in that purport. So I thought it is very important for all the devotees to understand those purports. <clears throat> Prabhupada says, Indra was so powerful that he accompanied Lord Vishnu. He felt himself a great offender for stealing Prithu Maharaj's horse. So he realized that actually what he was doing was a great sacrifice. I stole away that horse. It was not my duty to do this. As a thief, I stole away. It is a great offense I have committed. He realized this offense. An offender at the lotus feet of the Vaishnava is never excused by the Supreme Personality of Godhead. There are many instances. Amrish Maharaj was offender, was offended by Durvasa Muni a great sage and mystic yogi. Durvasa also had to fall down at the feet of Amrish Maharaj. Indra decided to fall at the feet of King Prithu. See? But the king was so magnanimous a Vaishnava, he did not want Maharaj Indra to fall down at his feet. Instead, King Prithu immediately picked him up and embraced him. And both of them forgot all the past incidents. Both King Indra and Maharaj Prithu were envious and angry with each other. So this is important. So sometimes it may happen that even devotees may become envious of each other. There is a possibility. Here we can see the example. Prithu Maharaj is a great devotee. Indra is also a devotee. 
but he is not a great devotee like Prithu Maharaj. But there is a possibility when, you know, when Prithu Maharaj was seeing he is disturbing like anything, anything, so he also became envious that yes, I will somehow or other perform, kill Indra and perform this hundred sacrifice. Isn't it? So, and uh, Indra was too much envious that he did not allow it at all. So, Prabhupada is saying here, King Indra and Maharaj Prithu were envious and angry with each other, but since both of them were Vaishnavas or servant of the Lord, it was their duty to adjust the cause of their envy. This is important. In devotional service, sometimes there is a possibility we may become envious of another devotee. Prabhupada is saying it is the duty of Vaishnava to adjust that envy. This is also a first class example of cooperative behavior between Vaishnavas. See, very wonderful example. The first class example of cooperative behaviors between Vaishnavas. And then Prabhupada is saying, in present day, because people are not Vaishnavas, they fight perpetually among one another and are vanquished without finishing the human form of life. See, this is very important to understand. That actually without being a Vaishnava, people would be animosity, you know, they will have animosity with each other. Perpetually they would fight, they would even give up their human form of life, they would finish their human form of life, waste their human form of life. So Prabhupada is saying, therefore, there is a great need to propagate Krishna consciousness movement in the world so that even though people sometimes become angry and malicious towards one another, because of their being Krishna consciousness, such rivalry, competition and envy can be adjusted without difficulty. You see? So even though it's a nature of the material world, people are competitive, they are rival to each other, animosity is there, enviousness is there, but all those things can become adjusted if they become devotees of the Lord. So, why this is important is, until and unless devotees become free from enviousness, they cannot think of welfare of others. Until and unless we become free from enviousness, we cannot think of welfare. We can see Indra was not able to think of welfare. When we become free from enviousness, then we can think about welfare of others. Maybe in the next class we will take up one great prayers by Prahlad Maharaj. Where in the purport Prabhupada explains that actually... There are two kinds of kruras, khala krura. One is sarpa krura, one is khala krura. When a snake is also considered to be envious. So, with mantra and oshadi, snake can be pacified. But if a person becomes enviousness, it is very difficult to control. So, it is only possible to get out of this enviousness. Otherwise, there is no possibility of controlling an envious person. Only possibility is by performing devotional service and that is what we are seeing here. That yog, by yog, yogaihi hema eva durvarnam. Just like gold can be purified of its impurity-based qualities by certain process, by following devotional process, it is possible that one can become freed from all these base qualities. So, we will try to see that in the next class. Granthra Srimad Bhagavatam ki jai Srila Prabhupada ki jai.